Tina Eddy. I am a member here at Sharp. Um, give you just brief history. Let's see. Back in, I've been um, a fitness professional, certified fitness professional since '83. And in 88, I started working with older adults long before I was one. I just had a one-year-old child at the time at North Avenue Presbyterian Church in downtown Atlanta with an organization that worked with um, Emory and, and Emory at Crawford Long at the time. That was called Crawford Long, uh, but now it's Emory Hospital with a bunch of gerontology nurse specialists. And we developed some very cutting-edge senior fitness programs way back in 88. And uh, at that time, we went around the state of Georgia to area agencies on aging and senior centers and tried to tra uh, train uh, activity directors how to safely and effectively uh, get their seniors moving. And at the same time, I uh, was commissioned for about three fitness videos at various stages, like um, we started out with a nursing home that had a component for the... Um, um, dementia and, and Alzheimer's units, how to get those folks moving. And that was actually very interesting. That was one of the, the most enlightening things um, that I've ever done is work with um, Alzheimer's uh, patients. And then we um, did um, a program for, it was a combination of seated and standing exercises, uh, all the way to line dancing for seniors. So we kind of did the gamut. And that was long before, you know, there was anybody really doing a lot of fitness training, but that was all through a grant um, at Emory Hospital. <clears throat> so I worked with uh, the senior population for about 12 years back then, which was where I was introduced to Tai Chi, Qigong, and um, the Alexander Technique. Is anybody familiar or heard of the Alexander Technique before? So I don't know a whole, um, I, I mean, I'm not trained to do it, but I did... Um, study under a guy for a while and there's a lot of really cool things that um, for spatial awareness, body awareness in space that's helpful so hope to give you some of those tips today too. Um, what I am not is a physical therapist or a medical professional. I am a certified fitness prof professional for over 40 years so I say that to say what we give you today, what we talk about you know, the movements that we might give you to help you kind of retrain all your systems. If you feel so, run it by your physician. I always say don't start anything new until you make sure your physician is okay with it or your, or your um, PA um, because I am not a medical person and your doctor knows your situation, your physical limitations or challenges more than I do. So what I'm going to give you today is kind of some general... Um, movements or strategies that you can think about to help you um, be more aware how you move in space as well as your home and um, the home is probably where that's where most falls occur so there are things that you may you know have had your home the same way it is when you were 60 or 55 and now if you're a little bit older there might be time to think of changing some things and doing some things differently. So I'm going to kind of go over the home stuff fairly briefly so we can get to the meat and potatoes of the movement. But you've got everything that's on the slides um, in your handouts. There's two of them and I wanted to share that with you as well as I did the slide uh, presentation. So if you want to take notes. But um, the biggest thing as we age, we have to kind of Sometimes, and I'm the worst, George probably knows that, you kind of have to let go of your pride and ego and what you've been used to doing. you got to modify. It's just the way it is. And sometimes we're like, I've always gotten that thing off the top shelf. I can get that. Well, now you may need to modify the home, not use those top shelves at all, and keep things a little bit lower. So those are just some things that I wanted to um, share with you. I love this first picture. I know you can't read it, but it says there are smarter ways to guard against falls than wrapping yourself in bubble wrap. <laughs> so those two have decided they're going to sit and wrap themselves in bubble wrap and they'll never fall. But probably if they did that and not move, they probably would fall. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of a home safety checklist. And like I said, your two handouts kind of have that. And I just want to briefly like pick out some um, points that um, I want to 
or to make it, feel free to say something, ask a question or whatever anytime. This is informal. And if I talk fast, it's because I've got a lot I want to cover. So um, most of the falls do occur at home. Um, there's some simple changes that you might want to go room to room and kind of look and say, okay, what do I have here that could be a safety concern? Most important, and, and I know I see it, is light. You need light in the dark, in dark hallways, definitely on stairs. Um, this uh, suggests that you um, don't, and of course, if you, I don't want you to go and have to get new carpeting, but be aware if you do have patterned carpet or carpet that has a lot of changes in color could be a, a vestibular problem you know, with vision and, and, um, and all that, uh, which would make it uneasy in, um, in your uh, walking. Enough light. Also, has everybody got railings on your stairs? If not, you at least need one. It's great if you have both. Um, keep um, flashlights around. We've got the wonders now of our cell phones having flashlights on them. But, um, you know, if the power outage, if power goes out, you definitely um, need to have flashlights close by. Um, bare wood steps, uh, put non-slip non -slip treads on them if you, if you haven't. Um, no, loose, uh, no loose rugs at the bottom of your stairs. Mm -hmm. If you're like me, um, when well, I've got carpeted stairs where we touch the, the floor is carpeted, but if you have wood stairs and then you have a wood floor at the top or bottom and have a loose rug, the only time, if you really need one, the only, the only thing I would suggest is um, get the grippers. Have, uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. The other thing you can use is shelf liners, like you know, at Walmart or Dollar um, General, you can get shelf liners and put those under rugs and they give it some stability. Do not leave objects on the stairs. And be mindful if you're carrying things up and down your stairs. You need to have at least one arm to hold on to the railing. If at all possible, don't go up and down the stairs We uh, with anything in your hand. Now, we do have a big dog, and we're going to talk about pets in a minute because they can, they can rake. Uh, the only fall I've had in the last two years um, was because I had a black dog and the hallway was dark and I thought he'd gone upstairs with George and I go turn the lights out and go walk in the hall and next thing I know my glasses are knocked off and I'm on the floor. Well I actually landed on his behind but um, <laughs> I thought he was gone. I did not have a light and I got in trouble. So um, being mindful. So now there's a night light downstairs and I go before I turn any lights off turn the hall light on then come back and turn my office lights and go and make sure Charlie's not around. So um, those are things on your stairs and steps. Any questions about that? That's pretty straightforward. In your bathroom, there's a lot of water in bathrooms. Very, very big potential for uh, slipping and falling. Um, it's funny, we bought our house and when they remodeled it, they took all the grab bars out of the bathroom because you know, I guess they thought that would make it not be as desirable. And we had to put all the grab bars back in because I needed it getting out of the tub and um, maybe near your toilet. Uh, it, it is what it is that you need that extra assistance. Now, um, we talk about ways to strengthen your thighs getting up and off the toilet, so that can, that can help as well. Um, glass shower enclosures, um, you know, I didn't think about that but I guess most things now are non-shattering glass anyway. Um, if you do do a rug in, in um, coming out of the bathtub, do make sure it's slip resistance, um, non-stick, uh, adhesive in the tub or shower or uh, a mat. One thing that I didn't think of is mounting a soap dispenser, and I kept thinking, why would that be uh, a safety issue? And I suppose if you have a bar of soap or you're pouring the soap in your hand and it falls in the, the tub, A, if it's bar soap, you got to bend over and pick it up, and if it's um, liquid, it could um, cause you to slide. So a soap dispenser in the bathtub is uh, something to think about. If you're at a point where you do need a seat, if you're unsteady enough, um, they've got those portable seats you can put in there, and raised toilets. So those are 
pretty standard things. The bedroom, um, again, evaluate your rugs. Do you have uh, rugs that are trip hazard? You know, you may have a nice rug, and if you've had it a while, you have a corner start to just curl a little bit. If it's So be aware of that. Either take that rug up and replace it with a new one, or do um, put you a sticky something to keep those corners, or put those corners under piece of furniture. Um, Sleep on a bed that's easy to get in and out of. I know, you know, you may like that nice fancy high bed, but it might be time to take it a little bit lower. Night lights are critical um, to get up. Uh, does anybody not ever have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night? I didn't think so. So that's where things get really, uh, really uh, tricky and risky. Be sure that you do have light to see. Um, Keep your telephone um, near your bed. And also another thing is if you get up, take a few minutes, just get set on the edge of the bed or the side of the bed before you get up. Give your equilibrium, everything a chance to sort of, okay, I'm awake enough to get up and go to the bathroom. If you do go to the bathroom, um, do you go barefoot? Do you have stockings or footies on? Or do you try to put some kind of shoe on. These are my household shoes. I don't like sling backs, I don't like clogs, no flip flops. Um, closed back shoe, this is a sketcher, it's got pretty good, this only stays in my house. So when I get up at night or whenever, this is what I put on, because it gives me a little extra cushion, it's got some grip on it, and um, they're just really a good, safer shoe. Just a thought on that. Um, a lot of bedroom slippers they make really don't have good soles underneath them. So be sure that you don't have a shoe that's going to cause you to slip. Um, definitely never on socks or stocking feet, please. And be sure all your electronic cords are secured against the wall or um, under the furniture. Do not put your electronic um, cords under a rug. Make sure they're against the wall. Nowadays, you can even buy all these little things that help you organize them and put them against the wall. Um, so be sure those are out of the way and not um, a trip hazard. Um, we're going to get to pets in a minute, but they can be under your foot in the bedroom too, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Living room, a lot more. That There's a, a lot. Just go home. Look at your pathway. Is it clear where you normally go from kitchen to living room to bathroom uh, to bedroom? Is the path clear? No loose rugs. Um, you know, if you can go, if you have a hardwood floor or carpet and you can go without an additional rug, it is safer that way. Uh, low tables, magazine racks, plants, anything that you can trip over. If you do have a footrest at your um, couch, just go put it, you know, when you get up, put it, you know, to the side under a table or something so there's nothing that you might forget about when you quickly have to go answer the phone or go get something out of the oven and you forget that that footrest or, or that whatever is still laying there. Um, we talked about cords, carpeting, um, if it, indeed you have concrete, ceramic, or marble floors, you do need um, something like maybe a big rug or something that just helps give you a little cushion because if you do fall, it's a little bit of a padding. Uh, and if you've got to determine carpet versus hardwood floors versus marble and rugs on it, what is best and, and easiest for you? Um, throw away wobbly chairs and ladders and uh, setting a, does anybody ever have trouble getting up and out of a chair or a couch when you visit somebody if it's really, really low? So try to at least keep you a 90 degree angle or greater um, when you're setting, unless you want to work on quad strength and, and you can go ahead and uh, do that. The kitchen, uh, that's a little low down there on the kitchen. Removing throw, okay, so the kitchen is Probably, if not the bedroom at night when it's dark, and the kitchen is a very big um, uh, safety uh, and fall risk. Remove any throw rugs that you have in your kitchen. Um, just let it be the floor that it is. 
If you spill something, um, try to clean it immediately. Um, you know, you may not know it's there, and that's where a problem can, can happen. But try to keep your floor clean and, and free of, of liquid grease or, or any food spills. And this is the one I mentioned earlier. It may be time. Take all that stuff, and if it's up there in the high cabinets and you haven't gotten it recently, it probably means you really don't need it. <laughs> and if you're getting it often, then you need to have it somewhere more manageable to get to. So, um, yeah, I guess you could do some long-term storage across the top, but you really want to think of keeping everything you need from about you know eye level um, down and make it easy to reach. Now, if you got things low, then we'll talk a little bit about how to get those things out. Please don't stand on chairs or boxes to get anything in the upper cabinet. And if you don't have a step stool that has a handrail, um, maybe consider getting one. We've got one, I think it has two steps, but it has like a little, and plus that's a good handle to carry it with. And, and that, um, as often as you can not as long as you do not need to get on a step stool, try not to get on a step stool. Uh, repair loose flooring, and I'm trying to think what the bottom is. I cut off. It's in the, um, well, it cut off there too. Something under there. But I can't remember what it was. Oh. Okay, animals. So I know for a fact some of, most of you have animals. I know that we've also had falls with animals. And uh, like I said, a couple of injuries I've had is because of my animals too. So this is it gets tricky because um, you really have to think of your situation. If you have a smaller dog or cat, and it's not going to drive you crazy, if you could put a bell or something so you can hear them when they're around you, that's an option. It may not be the best for everybody. And um, when you do have your animal on leash, even off leash, uh, if you haven't trained, and you don't have to go to a trainer to do this, but just begin to encourage them to walk, you know, along beside of you. You may want to start, if it's something you're wanting to develop, you may want to start with the leash in the house and begin to just every, I know it's a lot of work, but every day have them you know, on the leash by you, and if they stay by you, give them a treat, of course. Um, but the little bee dogs that run all around and in, and cats can, can, can be a big hazard. And I would say, look, big too. Um, so that's something to consider, is how to make your pet um, uh, less of a risk factor by teaching it not to get under your feet, but to stay beside of you. Um, larger dogs, pull in on the leash, and Every day now that I got the bird feeder going, man, we walk out the door, if there's a squirrel, Charlie's gone. Uh, thank goodness it's close to the house. And to be honest, I just let go of the leash because I know he's only going to go to the tree. Um, but if a dog is pulling you or sees another dog or an animal, it is not worth your life to hold on to the dog. I know you love that dog, but let it go. It will come back. Or, um, but you've got to uh, either train it not to do that with a command uh, or let it go if that happens. The worst thing, I was at a fitness convention with a fitness professional two years ago, and she, oh, she had her whole hand wrapped up. She was taking care of her son's dog, and she had wrapped the leash around her thumb, and he saw another dog, and it nearly, it about ripped her her thumb off. So she was going to get to keep her thumb, but um, wrapping around is just uh, not not good. And um, I saw the coolest thing the other day. It looked like a donut, like a round donut, and you stuck your hand through it, and it had a retractable thing, and you could actually put it right here as you were um, walking a dog, and um, I thought, and it would glowed in the dark and stuff. And I, can't even, I can't find where I saw it anymore, but there are things to help. There are waste, you know, um, things you could put, you know, be, ca be careful with that because if it's a big dog, it's going to pull you. So there are things you have to look at and consider how your animal fits in with your life and how 
at night, especially if you do have an animal and it sleeps on the bed and hops up when you get ready to go to the bathroom, you need to have light so you can see where that animal is. So just being aware um, may not have to make major life changes. Anybody have anything you want to add about pets? Just because I know they can be a... Um, Another thing to think of is weather, um, ice, rain, uh, anytime there's a wet sidewalk or a wet porch, icy porch, if you anticipate that the next day it's going to uh, maybe be um, icy or below freezing, spread you a little sand or a little salt on your porch or your first step, um, your driveway, whatever. Um, same way as by your car, where you go to get into your car, be extra aware of, um, you know, ice and, um, and, and wet surfaces. I know we live near a lake, and a lot of us are very active doing recreation stuff. We are near a body of water. Wear water shoes um, because that gives you a little more stability on the rocks and the sand. Uh, be aware of standing on rocks and um, any time... Just no flip flops. I know we all like flip flops and they're cute and all, but they're they can be pretty dangerous. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's just a suggestion uh, that we offer up on flip flops. Okay. Any kind of questions about the home? Anything you would like to share that you've done? Or yes, ma'am. It's almost the same thing, but the laundry room with the detergents and all. That's a good point. Slipped on the floor after something was spilled. So. That's a very good point. Spill either liquid laundry or even the grainy granular can cause you to, to fall. The other thing, too, when you are in the laundry room, you're picking up stuff, putting it in the washer or dryer, leaning over and having to pick it up. So be that cognizant of um, only picking up as much as you feel comfortable carrying and can see your feet or put it in a basket. Laundry room, we did put up, that's a very important place. Um, and um, be extra aware of all the same things in the other rooms of the house. Any other thoughts? Gina, about I have these kind of, in the kitchen, kind of rubbery. Um, they're squishy. Because um, I like the cushion thing. They don't slide at all, but... You know, oh, like a cushion mat, like yes, a, uh, yeah. what they call it, like a support mat. Yeah. You're standing mm -hmm. in front Are those of your. Okay, if they don't move around. I mean, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know. You know, you have that and where it is, and yeah. if it feels like it doesn't move and, yeah. and secure, yeah. okay. because if you're standing a lot in one place, mm -hmm. you need that extra yeah. support too. Yeah, and a lot of this is common sense stuff. You know, we the thing that why it's good to hear it again is it's probably different what we need now than we did 20 years ago. And it's just reminding us that we need to reevaluate often, yearly, five years, whatever, a change in your health status, you need to evaluate how your home's set up. So that was the, the main thing that we wanted to um, talk about on that. Okay, falls in older adults. One in four Americans over the age of 65 fall a year. How many people have fallen in the last year? Just raise your hand. So whatever the reason, it's very prevalent as we age for a number of reasons. Every 11 seconds an older adult is treated in the emergency room for a fall and this is one that just breaks your heart. Every 19 minutes they die from a fall and that's probably due to a head injury more than likely. Um, falls are the leading cause of fatal injury and the most common cause of non-fatal admissions to the hospital. <clears throat> Five types of aging. So um, not only do we get older chronologically, but we also get older a couple of other ways. So yes, you have your years, and we all know that the body declines through the years, um, muscle, ma um, muscle mass, decreases about 10% um, every decade. Sometimes after, I think it's after 70, you have a greater decrease each year. But functional, so a functional aging. 
that means that it's harder to do your activities of daily living, the things that you're normally needing to do, cook, get up off the toilet, get in your car and drive, those things can all um, become a little more difficult. Biological, and that's physical functioning, it's a little different than functional. Biological is just your health, kind of your hereditary, you know, arthritis, uh, osteoporosis, different types of things biologically that are changing in your body that make you age differently as well. Psychologically, we know that there's cognitive issues as we age. And then social aging, and you probably didn't think of this, but I mentioned it when I said pride and ego a little bit. You have to begin to accept where you are now and be able to feel comfortable with that. Uh, have your own uh, self-efficacy knowing that it's okay to make these changes. It's okay that things are happening because um, it, it is what it is. So, and, and two, I think the last two years have been hard on our aging socially because lack of it, you know, with uh, uh, COVID and what we've gone through. So, you know, you may have even a different perspective about getting out socially. And um, that, you know, that is an aging change as well, believe it or not. Okay. So after the age of 62, there's a marked decrease in walking speed associated with the dysfunction. Maybe your mental and physical health has changed. It can create a loss of independence and a higher mortality risk. And um, after the age of 50, there's a tendency to, to lose muscle mass. That's called sarco sarcopenia. And what that is, is if you don't use it, you lose it, but also aging and hereditary, your muscle mass starts to decrease. And with that comes um, issues with strength, um, which with fast and slow um, twitch muscle fibers, which we'll talk about in a minute. Women are especially prone to it because we don't have a lot of testosterone, and after menopause, there's even less. So testosterone is what helps us build muscle mass. So we have to be extra conscious of our um, strength and keeping ourselves strong. So, and these changes, uh, Okay, so there's multiple systems that contribute to your balance and mobility. So your sensory systems. That is your hands, your feet, it's touch. It's things that help you determine um, your current actions versus uh, helping you respond. For instance, you put your foot out and um, if, you, you know, neuropathy can cause you not to feel the ground the way you might normally feel it or pick your foot up uh, as well as you need to. So sometimes there can be changes in our sensory system. The motor system is how um, your body reacts to what the sense is telling me. Oh, I see a rock there. I'm walking toward the rock, but I have the ability to step to the side and move around that rock. So that's your motor system acting on those um, on the sensory information. And if there's issues with your sensory, then um, that can, can um, cause some balancing issues. The som uh, somato system is the information from your spatial location and the movement of your body. So it's like, okay, this floor is flat but I've got a heel here or I've got an uneven sidewalk. And so once again, it sees other systems work with it to um, the brain telling it, oh, wait a minute, there's uh, a change. We got a, a step to go down. We've got a heel to go up, something like that. Is this making sense so far? Mm -hmm. Then the vestibular si uh, system. Now that's the eyes, <coughs> the equilibrium, the balance. If you've got vertigo issues or maybe dizziness from medication, bad vision, cataracts, that's all the vestibular system, and that's um, where it determines uh, to the world is your body moving. Have you ever sat in your car, maybe at a stoplight, and it's raining, and it's moving and, and rushing down the road, and you're not sure for a second whether your car's moving 
or the water. You know, those kinds of odd things. You're like, wait a minute, and you put your foot on the brake again. I've done that. So that is that visual, the, the whole equilibrium thing to help you determine, hey, am I moving or is car moving or something else moving? So age-related changes to the balance system. And so I kind of just went on it briefly. Um, but changes in your visual system can affect your ability to perceive those changes in the surface um, or hazards in your environment. The vestibular system becomes critical for balance when your eyes um, and uh, is absent or your vision is off or also your uh, somatosensory system is distorted or there's conflict. Uh, and these things can go off through things like vertigo. Like I said, medication can throw, you know, um, your body off. Um, you know, cataracts. What else? Uh, just um, aging changes in your body and what you, um, uh, well, we're talking about neutral posture here in a minute. Um, between the age of 50 and 70, muscle strength declines as much as 30%. So technically about 10% a um, decade, 1% a year. Uh, okay, any questions so far? All right. But there is something we can do. It's not a lost cause no matter where you are in life. You can make some changes. Some of it's awareness. Some of it is physical strength and uh, flexibility and balance training, but you can make a difference. And developing a comp uh, combination of strength, power, and endurance is really the best way to build your muscular um, strength, your mass, your cardiovascular, your neuromuscular function, and just con functional capacity. You don't want to be bodybuilder. Your goal right now is just to continue to be able to do your ADLs, your activities of daily living, and activities you enjoy doing at, and continue to do them through the rest of your life, right? You just want to be able to do the things you want to do. And that's what we try to do in exercise is train your, your muscle and your brain, your muscles and your brains to react so that you can continue to do those activities of daily living. And um, one of the things I mentioned, and I think I'm probably going to mention again in the middle, in a minute, but while my brain's there, it talked about power. Um, so as we age and our muscle mass decreases, we tend to kind of just slow down overall. The things that we do are slow. We just, everything is a little bit slower. The big component of really good balance and aging fitness program uh, is to work on some quick movements. Some, uh, they call it fast twitch muscle fibers. If we're used to just everything going slow, then your reaction time will slow down, right? But if I picked up this ball and I threw it to you, your reaction time is a fast twitch muscle fiber response. So if you threw it back at me or I kicked it and the ball comes to you, believe it or not, this is one of the most, for Alzheimer's and dementia, we would sit in a circle and throw a ball to each other. And you may not be able to have really good cognitive, but you can react and catch that ball. And by doing that, you're continuing to keep that, that response, that reaction time, because you need that to catch yourself if you accidentally you know, um, find yourself having to shift your balance. So um, in time, and you know, guys that did the Tai Chi class, you know, will sometimes do a quick kick, or you can do a quick punch and then slow. You've got to have that fast twitch muscle fiber movement now and then and if you don't do it every day I challenge you to begin to put some of those fast movements in with your slow movements or like a walk walk one two three or you know it can be this slow and just one two three you've got to challenge and keep those those fibers um, stimulated and strong all right so, um, balanced ter terminology, the process of controlling the body's center of mass with respect to the base of support when you're moving or uh, stationary um, is sometimes called static balance and dynamic balance. So with center of mass, okay, um, where do you think 
your stability or your center of gravity. All my fitness people probably know this answer, but <laughs> your center of mass, your center of gravity, where is it? Does anybody that's not a fitness regular take class kind of have an idea? So you're saying up here. Your center of mass is two inches below your belly button. This should be from whence you walk. This is where you walk from. You don't walk from up here. You walk from down here. This is what moves you. This is where your mass is. Not because you've got big hips and thighs, but because you've got a, a large pelvis bone. This, if you look at a skeleton, this is where your center of mass is. And what's kind of good about that it's closer to the floor, so it's a lower center of gravity. Your base of support is where your feet are over this center of mass. So you've got, and I like to call it center of gravity, um, but you'll see it on here as COM. Um, so when I have my center of mass and my base of support is wide, I got a good solid, you know, base of support under me. When I bring my base of support closer together and I got my mass, then I got a little bit bigger sway issue that I'm um, dealing with keeping my balance on, which we're going to get y'all up and practice some of that. So that's a little bit about balance. Posture is a biomechanical alignment of the body parts and orientation to the environment. So this is where things get a little tricky depending on if you've got osteoporosis or you've got any, any bone issues. But your posture should be what's called neutral posture. And again, if you think of stacking, ears over shoulders, you know, shoulders over hips, and, and sort of a relaxed um, lower back, and then your hips should intersect right behind the back of your knee, and that should go over the arch of your foot. So that's neutral posture, chest open, and eyesight straight ahead, um, chin level. In an ideal world, you could stand like this forever. You know, horses and cows and all that that stand up all the time, they've got an extra little, they have a locking mechanism in their, their legs to keep where they can sleep upright. We don't have that. So you don't want to lock your bones, but you want to have everything relaxed and neutral so that if you were picked up by the top of your head, your body would just dangle naturally under one another. And we're, and we're going to get up and practice posture in a minute too. Anticipatory postural control is when you're planning what, you know there's a mountain and you know there's a little creek to walk over. So you're anticipating that, so you know it's there, so what am I going to do? I'm either going to go around the creek or I'm going to take a big step with my hiking poles and go over that creek. Um, you're anticipating there's a postural change coming. Reactive is... You're going along and all of a sudden something runs out in front of you or you don't see a brick sticking up out of the sidewalk and oops, you are on top of it and you've got to react. you either got to quickly move to the side or step over it. So do you see the difference? You can plan something, you look out ahead, you know what's coming, but when you don't, you've got to have the ability to, relax, to react and that's where that fast twitch uh, muscle fiber from your brain to your uh, motor system comes in. Stability limit, the maximum distance an individual is able or willing to lean in any direction. And we're going to practice that in a minute. As well as the sway envelope, which is the path of your movement during quiet time. Mobility is the ability to move independently and safely from place to place. Kind of goes hand in hand with flexibility, but um, all right. So... I'm going to ask you um, to stand up if you're comfortable, and we're going to talk a little bit about these strategies, and I want you to kind of see, you don't have to go away from your chair. Actually, if you're a little bit unsure, I would make sure that you got your chair there with the hand on it or stand to the side. Um, I just want you to feel like you got something there if you need it, because what we're going to do is try to get you off balance. A little bit so you need your chair if you're not comfortable with that okay so these are postural control strategies they're things it's more or less assessing where you are right now and helping you realize just where maybe your limitations are but at the same time um, 
help train your brain to use these different strategies if it becomes off balance. It also can be used as an actual, actual exercise itself to help you. So probably one of the biggest reasons that we might be unstable or imbalanced is our ankles. Weak ankles, sprained ankles in the past, broken ankles. Your ankles, it starts from the bottom up, okay? So your ankles are so, so important. Um, and there's so many ways you can strengthen your ankles, which you probably also know. But I would like for you to just stand with your feet right underneath your hips, not real wide. Don't put your feet close together, but just right, if you look, drew a line down right underneath you. So your ankle strategy is to test how far you can move in your ankles and the ankle mobility. So what I want you to do, and, and it's not a hip, it's not upper body, it's everything. I just want you to shift side to side your whole body and, and your ankles. So you might feel, um, if you've ever had a sprained ankle, you might not go as far one side as the other, but you're just swaying and do you feel as you sway, a little bit of weight shift goes out and it kind of comes in and goes the other way. Now, I want you to sway forward and back. And it's okay if your toes grip a bit, of course, because they're going to want, but it's the whole body just swaying. Just kind of see how far your ankles are letting you sway. If you go a little bit far, you know you go a little bit far because then your heels want to pop up, right? Now, let's take it in a circle. So just sway in your ankles, the whole body, keeping, you know, keeping your hips right underneath your shoulders and just sway. So that's just a good way to just, you know, you can, you can be standing and just sway. Just I'll go the other direction. Do your ankle strategy the other direction. Don't get the hips going. It's everything. It's just like you're doing a little, like you were a pencil and drawing a circle around your outermost parts of your ankles. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to strengthen ankles in a minute. So this kind of strategy is if you're standing somewhere and you had to lean to get something, so you would only need to use your ankles to stay balanced. Does that make sense? So it's a small change in um, balance or instability. So a hip strategy is a little bit bigger. Somebody comes up and they go, hey there, Doris, how you doing? And Doris has to go like this. So it's to keep her from falling. So a hip strategy is the same kind of thing, but you stick your hip out. So knee soft. I always like to have a soft knee. So you're sticking your hip out. So just do a hip strategy. That would be if the, if the um, shift of balance was a little bigger, you stick your hip out. And we got some hipsters out there. <laughs> you got, you, it's your hip. So don't be afraid. Stick that hip out there. This is actually one of the number when I used, when I was younger working with um, the seniors at the time, um, we would do these kind of silly things, you know, and little rock in the hips and rock around the clock. And while, you know, some of the more proper ladies yeah. were like, I'm not going to do that. But this is so fundamental to your strength and mobility, doing the hula hoop. It's things like that that really keep that hip mobility because the hip is a, a mobile joint. And um, don't be afraid to put on a little Elvis and go for it, you know. Just turn, you've got to move the hips, but this is hip strategy. You lose your balance, you gotta remember, oh, I can stick that hip out there and I won't fall. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger loss of balance than ankles. Now, a step strategy, and that is someone really pushes you or whatever, and you got to pick a foot up and step it out there to, step, to catch your balance. So, it doesn't have to be real big, but just I want you to practice the step strategy. You feel like you're losing your weight from your ankle, and you got to put your foot there. So, do it like that. Go with your ankle, and then stick your foot out. When the ankle won't take you any further, you got to stick your foot out there, right? Um, probably most of y'all are practicing with one foot. Don't try the other. So this is just forward. So we're just losing to the ankle, and we got to put the foot there to catch us. Let's try it side. So 
to the side, you've got to pick that foot up. And that's harder because if you're going this way, you've got to remember. And two, what this is doing by practicing it, it's reminding your brain, hey, I've seen that before. When that happens, oh, yeah, I had to pick that foot up and put it out there. Again, if you don't practice these things, your brain gets lazy and doesn't remember it, right? All right, go the other way. So just kind of put it. So this start out with ankle, then my hip. Oh, i got to put the foot out there to catch them, okay? Is this making sense so far? So these are just strategies of ways that you respond and react to keep you from falling. So little one, it might just be your ankle, and you can practice, and then hip, and then practice in you know, your hip flexibility, and then stepping. And how would you practice stepping? Uh, lunges. Then how, when you say lunges, most people think, oh, I've got to be down like this. No, just um, a weight change. So see, so you've already gotten three exercises right now that you can practice to help um, with balance. And of course, if you go forward, you don't always just fall forward. You might um, lose balance at an angle to the side. So just try that. And again, you got your chair there if you need it. And then to the side, straight out. So these are wonderful, wonderful exercises to just, you know, do a little, and now. Big one. Step back. <laughs> and forward. Yeah. Step back. You've got to train your body to be comfortable stepping back, and that also helps strengthen some of those anti-gravity muscles. And you have to do it fast. You've got a chair there. But we've got to step back because when you start to go like this, the brain's going, wait a minute, what do we do? Oh, yeah, we put a foot out. It's reminding your brain what it needs to do when you lose balance back. Y'all are good. Let's see. Okay, you can sit down for a few minutes <laughs> before I get you up again. So this is um, this is crucial. If you could remember too many things, um, remembering this is really really important. So as we age, you know we've got muscle you know imbalances. We've got bone. Um, you know, osteoporosis, any of that. We've also got gravity. Just through the years, gravity pulls us. We also have repeated, um, what do we do a lot? We sit. We round. Nowadays, we're looking at our phone, we're on the computer, we're reading a book. Everything is here, 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 here. So you do that for 70 years, and what starts happening? These muscles get tighter. They're flexed and they stay more flexed. These muscles, these are called the anti-gravity muscles. It's basically the muscles in the back. They start to overstretch and get weak. And so they give in to the tightness of, um, of the uh, overflexed muscles. And this is generally speaking. I know there are health issues. There are things that can, you know, um, make this uh, be, be more difficult. But I'm just generally speaking. So, in a, and I use the word fitness, but in any kind of movement program, your goal as we age is to keep functional, is we need to stretch the overflexed, over tight muscles, and we need to strengthen the anti-gravity muscles. Why? Keep us upright into neutral posture, which is our goal. You might not ever get into a perfectly straight neutral posture, but you can improve upon it which will help you overall. One of the biggest things is what's happening here in the neck. And I've been more and more aware of it, and I try more and more to do these exercises every day. But doing like this, most of, especially if I can't see something really well, you know, then I stick my neck out to see it. So what I should do is either bring what I'm looking at bigger uh, in my case, take my glasses off because I, I can read better and don't have to do that. Um, or I need to just remember to stay, keep my head on my shoulders. So the cervical uh, muscles are in the front of the neck. The neck mu muscles are back here. These guys get overstretched all the time, and these guys are flexed, so we need to stretch them and we need to strengthen these. So how can we do that? 
Okay, sitting where you are, just look straight ahead and keep your chin level. Okay, now think of the turtle. So turtle sticks his head out of the shell, but we're not, I don't want you to over exaggerate it. Turtle, but then the turtle's going to pull his neck back in his shell. Tuck your chin, yeah, it's okay, you're going to make an ugly chin, whatever. And when you do that, like, what do you feel? Do you feel pulling here? Okay, now release to neutral and pull that chin in again. Hold it for maybe seven seconds and then release. Just doing it two times, do you feel like your head's setting better on your shoulders? Another way to do it is you can just go here and push into the wall at home and hold it and release and then push back again. Or if you want, you can put a hand back there and push into your hand. Not like this, but straight back in. Does that make sense? So there's your good way to strengthen those neck muscles easy peasy while you're sitting at a stoplight um, watching TV. Let's get these neck strong so you can. And just doing a few of them, you feel better, better balance. Um, Rector spinae, it's really all these muscles that go up and down the back. Any shoulder blade squeezing, um, any, um, any pulling, anything that causes the back to contract and the chest to open. If you think about another thing that starts to happen as we age and we're flexed, if I'm like this, my lungs don't have a lot of space to expand and contract. My heart doesn't really have a whole lot of space to make big beats. And of course, the digestive system's all scrunched up in there. So if I can work on fanning my chest open, if you see this beautiful, beautiful Asian fan, or you know, you open it out, think of it starting here and open that fan. Show your fan off, open that chest, and you can take bigger breaths. Your heart has more room to breathe. Your abdominal, all your digestive organs have more space to operate efficiently. And so just maybe practice every day of opening that chest immediately and open, I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together. Um, so just breathing and opening that chest, feeling proud and I don't, you know, just, hey, I did something good. Um, whatever helps you remember to open your chest. Um, your backside, your hamstrings, your calves, your soleus, of course, if we start down here, your calves um, and your, are fundamental in helping strengthen your ankles. So we all know good heel lifts. Um, I got a little yoga block, but you could use a step and just do, hold on to something if you need to, but just do some heel raises. Don't just raise, lower so you stretch. And ladies, if you wear high heels or any heels at all, you need to be stretching that heel cord every time you take those heels off to keep, because if that gets tight, that will uh, decrease your ankle stability, okay? Glutes. Glutes um, are so important to keep you upright and not to, um, like this, your hip flexors get so flexed. Um, and that stretches your backside. You need your backside, you need your quads to get up off the toilet. That's pretty fundamental. So any exercise that can strengthen your glutes by squeezing them, you know, you want to include that in a good program or just want to stand every day, just lift a leg back and lift another one back. Um, hamstrings are the backs of your legs. The movement that strengthens a hamstring is an extension and a curl. Okay. Um, these stretch your hamstrings, which of course I like to stretch everything after you work it, but those are your hamstrings. <coughs> Calves, knees and quadriceps are pretty much the workhorse of the body. When you say basis support, center mass, these are where the biggest muscles are in your body, your glutes and your quads. Okay, I would like everybody to set, um, push your chair back a little bit and set in the middle of your chair. Both feet on the floor. Do your beautiful fan chest, your chin level, and just set tall. 
Now, you're having to use muscles to do this. You're not going to have the back of the chair holding you. Um, make sure that your feet are 90 degree angles. So, I don't want my, I'm going to turn sideways. I don't want my feet back here because most of the time you think, oh, I got more stability. But what you're doing is putting your entire body's weight on your knees. So, if I have my feet out here at 90 degree angle, then I have actually like a rod. The bone is going to assist getting me up and I don't have to uh, rely on my knees. Okay, so lots of these exercises we're we'll talking about in a minute too is progression. You'll start uh, maybe supported like holding on to the table, holding on to the side of the chair, whatever, putting your hands on your thighs would be a good place to start when we're training knees and thighs. But for right now, I want you to try, and however, if you need to do this, if you need to put the hands on the table, I want you to lean forward and then try to stand up, okay? However you need to, if you need to use a cane, okay. These chairs are so low. The chairs are low. The good news is they're cushiony, but they are low. So that's a way to safely, it's also a good exercise, do these, practice it to get this stronger. And then how to set back down. Well, number one thing, you turn around and make sure the chair is there, right? <laughs> and that it's not going to move because your floor is going to move. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple of ways to set back down. You um, get in kind of a squat position, but you bend the knees and stick your backside out. If you need... Um, to hold on for support or here or your cane, you get that now. You lean and you bend the knees till your backside lands on the chair. Your goal is to be able to control it all the way down. You probably find you get about right here and then you go thunk, right? <laughs> That's okay. That tells you we're going to work on taking the thunk out. So um, that is a good quad strengthening. If you can no longer do this, like as we, if, if we lose the ability to get up and down, what's going to happen? You'll go to a nursing home. Because you can no longer self-care and do independent living. So you've got to keep these quads strong or, and or figure out modifications of how to make it work so you can stay independent. But your quads are the biggest, um, they're, they call quads because how many muscles are in them? And um, they're really valuable for everything that you need to stay independent and functioning in, um, in life. Um, questions on this? Because I've got a bunch of exercises we want to go over. Okay. Okay, very good. All right, so these are when we're going to do a few things here, and we're going to do a few things on... Um, all right. These are movements and things that you can do every single day just a little bit to help you with your balance to improve whether it's for visual reasons, sensory reasons, um, skeletal, muscle, whatever. These are some things we can do every day. Neutral posture awareness. And we just talked about that, but I'm going to have you stand up again and just practice a neutral posture, what it might feel like. So the first thing that we want to do is have your feet about hip distance apart. There's really no reason to ever stand like this for in the balance world. There's, there's really no reason, unless you are wanting to do an exercise. So really, the feet should be aligned right under your hips. Okay, so you practice your own um, neutral posture. So when I'm here, I want the weight to feel in my feet. I want it to be between about the ball of my foot and the middle of my arch, okay? Knee joint is soft, not bent, um, but it's soft. Because once you lock, look, look what happens. Once I lock my knees, my pelvis, mm -hmm. my lower back. So keep the knees soft, meaning just don't lock any joints. And then what's happening here is if you just think, you know, your spine and picture of it. You want to think if it were a plumb line and you had a weight on your tailbone, that weight just would kind of gently rock downward toward the floor, okay? 
abs are in and you almost think of your abs coming in and kind of tucking under your rib cage, but they're not, you know, remember the old fitness used to go like that. It's not that, but it's just, it's like you're hugging your spine. So let your abs hug your spine. And then let the chest be open by pulling and lowering the shoulder blades so they're kind of right over the hips and the arms are just here. Um, chest open as opposed to, the, and you know, and I know I'm aware there's a lot of physical, you may not be able to do that, but you can do a little bit better than where you are now. Think of chin, level, and your eyes. Your eyes need to be looking straight ahead. You may think they don't need to, that you need to be looking at the floor, but if you survey where you're going ahead of time, you know what's there, you can look ahead. You know when you're driving in a car, you don't just look at the little bit of road in front of the front of your car, right? You look down the road to anticipate oh, there's going to be a turn coming soon. Um, and granted, yeah, a car may jut out to the side you've got to be aware of. But same way when you're walking and you're looking, you really need to keep that neutral posture and look out as best you can. All right, that's neutral posture. Practicing stability strategies, that's what we did. Ankle, practice the hip, and then go a little further and practice the leg, um, the step strategy with each leg, front, side, back, okay? Um, transferring, supported, progressing, progressing to unsupported. So transfer exercises could be anything. Let's see, let's make sure I get the one. Um, well, like we did in the seat. Support to get up, down, and then um, progress it to maybe just the chair, and then to unsupported. Okay, practice visual progressions. Okay, so I know I said don't put your feet together, but this is for exercise purposes. Put your feet together. Try to get your neutral posture. Now close your eyes. Do you feel a sway? Mm -hmm. A little bit less stable, right? And open. So that tells you how important your visual sensory is. Um, so uh, you need to practice that so that your body and brain can be aware that my visual could be off. Okay, open your eyes, stand here. Now just look right. Come back to center, look left, come center, look up, not, not using your head, just your eyes, look center and look down, okay, now turn your head right, come back to center, are you feeling your ankles wobbly a bit maybe, turn left, center now, let your head look down, always come back to center, and then look up. So, are your ankles doing what my ankles are doing? Moving a little bit? When you turn your head, now, do this. Turn your head right, and then look down. And then come back up level right, and then come center. Same way left. And then look down. And come center. Now look up. And down. So visually, you got a couple of, and you can relax now. Visually, you got a couple of things to think about. You can use your eyes and not have to get out of neutral posture, and then you can use your head. And when you use your head, especially using the vestibular system, you have a little bit more sway, a little bit more off balance. Dynamic and static balancing exercises. So static balance, okay, stand with your feet about hip distance apart like we talked about. Shift all the weight to the right and just tap your left foot by your right foot. Okay. Now, do you want to push that heel out? Okay, and then come back and we'll do the same thing to the other side. So you're standing on your left foot and you just kind of tap it close and then just push that heel out. Okay, and back in. These are examples of kind of static balance where, all right, stand on your right foot and just tap your, your toe to the side. So we're beginning to build working on maybe one day standing on one leg and practicing that. But this is static, meaning that you're still, you just have 
a leg to the side, bring that in, and the other thing, the other side. Um, so static balance is really important uh, too to work on for backwards, uh, back move. Put your, um, put your leg back, and I'm gonna hold on to the chair, and you're welcome to hold on to the chair. So, um, but are we still thinking of neutral posture, chest open? We're all right here. Oh, I'm with, well, I'm almost done. Back to center and the other leg. Okay, so eventually you might want to just, you know, practice picking that leg up and, and standing on one leg, whether you do it, you know, here first supported and then maybe a little bit unsupported and supported to the point where you could go unsupported. How long? However long you're comfortable and want to want to work on that. So those are dynamic. Okay, so that's static balance. Dynamic balance is put your right foot over there, and step into it, and then step left. So just a transfer of weight. So dynamic balance is all the things you do, losing balance and regaining it. And again, this is another one. You can step forward, come together, and then step back. Or you can just rock. Step forward, just rock into that foot, and then rock into the back foot. Anything to practice, basically what you're doing is practicing losing balance and telling your body how to regain it, okay? Um, along with that, do practice stepping back. And it doesn't mean you have to step back like this. You know, hold on to that chair and just step back. How many people have fallen backwards? <laughs> Miss Jane, we know, yes. <laughs> so um, we do need to practice. Remembering and practicing this, it's a brain exercise. Mm -hmm. It's working on your computer uh, hard drive. You're, get you're keeping that computer hard drive working, your brain. Um, Anti-gravity muscle strengthening exercises. And I've got things like, like these bands. You know, if you've been in my class, you probably have one of these at home. Um, standing behind your chair like you are or by your chair and doing some, you know, just some hip raises. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be a lot of hard work. You just need to kind of move out to the side, tap or lift. Um, any any of that, that type of movement seated. Um, this would even be a really good quad strengthening exercise seated. So there are things you can do like that. Oops. Went back. Okay. Um, if when we get, I've got a lot of those inspired fitness classes on YouTube. And most all of my classes that I've done that we maybe not be doing right now are on YouTube and you're welcome. You know, they're all made for us. And um, they would give you a lot of this information and these, these types of anti-gravity. And then overuse and overflex muscles. And again, that just means open your arms. Let's give everybody a big hug. Make it as big as you can. Do you feel that awesome stretch that goes all the way across? Good. That is a, an overflex or overuse muscle in the front of the body. That's what we want to do is to stretch those muscles. Same way as when we're doing our hips, if we, um, anything that, any pelvic thrust, anything that stretches these hip flexors, um, if you've ever driven a long ways, you get out of the car at the rest area, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to do that because naturally your brain says, we need to stretch these. They've been tight too long. It's important that they are stretched anytime you've been seated for an extended period of time. Um, and when you're doing your quad strengthening, I mean your glutes strengthening, guess what's happening? You're stretching here. So uh, a two-part bonus. Train and practice fast twitch muscle fiber movements. So I want you to do this. I want you to punch, punch, and then punch one, two, three. So slow, slow. Fast, fast, fast. Slow, slow. Fast, fast, fast. All right? With our feet. I want you to pick one leg up and kick it. Just like you're kicking something. Just kick it. Boom. Get that aggression out. Okay, that's one. Uh, 
Somebody actually really kicked her. The other thing is to go walk, walk, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. That fast is important. It really is. Because if you did run across something and you had to, you know, a snake, that's what first thing come to my mind. I'm all gonna say a snake, I wanna go one, two, three really quick. So think of those kinds of things. Practice slow, slow, and then some fast, fast, fast. Arms, legs, whatever. Um, okay, so this will be the last little thing um, that I want to go over, and y'all are okay if we go five more minutes, right? Good. Moving efficiently and effectively through activity of daily living. Now, you can sit if you want, um, or you can try some of these. It's totally... Totally up to you. May have to, to walk a little bit. Um, so, if you're at the grocery store or Home Depot, any place where you're pushing a cart, probably don't think about how you're pushing a cart. You either probably have arms straight and you're like this, or if you're tired, you probably got your arms over the bunch of walking <laughs> like this. Um, but everything is what? Do you see what I'm doing? Uh, or pushing a grandbaby stroller. Like this. We talked about moving from our center of mass or our base of support. With it, it, and this is part of a little bit of an Alexander technique um, concept. You need to move from your base of support. Um, if you're going to open a window, if you're going to anything that causes you to push or pull. Of course, we know they always told you use your legs, right? But more importantly, is to think of keeping your body centered and let the movement come from the strongest part of your body, the biggest muscle groups, and that's your hips and your glutes. So I've got my hands on the buggy, and I want to move from here. I want to let the power, of when, just try it next time you push a, a cart. I want the power to come from my hips um, and not from here. Do you see the difference? Honestly, You'll feel stronger. It's a little more work in your legs. Your legs will get stronger. Your upper body will be relaxed. Your shoulders won't be like this. And you are using the power of what God gave you to move forward. Okay? So you're moving forward from your hips. Likewise, you're in your kitchen, your workshop, whatever it is you're doing. And let's say I'm in the kitchen and I got my little sink of dishes and I got to put them in the dishwasher. Wait a minute, I got to get in the refrigerator. And what do we try to do? We get lazy. We try to just twist. I'm going to twist and get this here. Oh, I'm off balance. The most efficient way to use your body, as I'm standing here, I'm getting ready to put this in the dishwasher or the refrigerator. I'm going to pick my foot up. I'm going to turn and put it where it needs to be. Pick my feet back up. Go back to what I was doing. Pick my feet up and turn. Do what you need to do. And then go back, right? It also burns extra calories, by the way. But remembering to efficiently move everything together in whatever you're doing. And if you have to lift a window, remember, you get um, close to the window, you grab it, you bend your knees, and you lift that window with what? Your thighs and your glutes, not your arms. Especially women, because we said we had lost uh, testosterone after menopause, you're weaker in your upper body. So any chance, anything you can do using the power of your um, quads and your center of mass, you should, you should try to use. Um, other activity, let me think. Um, just, you know, anything you lift, think of your quad setting. We used to call this in my class the Walmart uh, set, and ladies probably know why. But um, anytime you can do something to strengthen your quads, and to keep you strong, so if you're picking a laundry basket up, or you know, even things such as starting a lawnmower, um, you know, you've got to you got to do some rotation, but get your get your body down where you can do it with your waist and your core, not have to use your arms and shoulders. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All those kinds of things are just so important. Like I said, this could easily be a couple of hours of class. So kind of what we talked about, last thing, stand with feet together, close eyes, we did that. Another thing to practice is reach your, 
you know, have somebody have a pencil or just not have a pencil. Just see how far you can reach out before you have to put your step out. So reach something and then put your foot. That helps too if you're too, if you don't move your feet and you gotta reach over. So you want to practice reaching and then stepping. Or seeing how far your ankles go before your hips go before you need to, um, to do that. Walking in a circle right and left. These are things you can take home and work on as well. You just want to practice walking in a circle to the right and then be an itty bitty circle. And then practice in walking to the left. Step on and over a little bench. Um, I, got, I got my little bitty yoga block. But you want to step up and then step down and over. Um, if you ever had a knee replacement, you know this is kind of an exercise that they have you do as well. Um, but that is a very good one. I know that's probably not six inches, probably only three, so that would be, that would be six inches. Um, oh, okay. You got, you got at least a couple little feet in front of you. This is a crazy one. This one you definitely want to start supported. Tandem walking. Heel in front of toe. You don't have to go very far. If you got the chair, then turn around. Hold on to the chair. <laughs> don't do this after a glass of wine. <laughs> but um, do it and don't look down. Keep your neutral posture, chest open. Hold on to something, because that's definitely something you probably have not done this in a while. And then turn as long as you got your chair and tandem walk. Then as you get stronger, you're going to hold your arms out. As you get real strong, walk tandem backwards. But it's stuff to practice. Don't have to go to a special fitness class. Don't have to do anything special. Just have to work on those little things. Standing on one leg is a good one. Standing on a piece of foam, they were just mainly saying, like a pillow, stand on a pillow one leg. Because the in instability of something soft like that, you can feel that ankle working. Very good for the ankle. Jump with both feet for distance. I probably won't do this one because I've got knees that are issues. But you could just practice, if you're comfortable, practice jumping and see how far you can jump. And walk while turning your head, and that is a good one, because how many people just go through life walking like this? Well, you don't. So practice turning to the right and walking, and then practice turning left, and then practice turn a little bit right, a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit left, and you can give that queen walking. <laughs> um, practice walking and, and looking down and up, and looking down. You see how I'm going in a circle? So these are all strategies and things that you can do will really help you. And restore balance after backwards disturbance, just meaning step back and, you know, practice stepping back. Okay. Has this been helpful? Yes. Okay. Thank you. A little bit more than now, but I wanted you to see some practical applications, just some simple things. If, I, if anything take away is evaluate your home to make it work for you in a way that there's not any risk hazards. And train, do movements that train your brain and your muscle fibers. You want to train your brain to remember what it needs to do if you lose balance. And also do some fast and slow stuff. Walk slow, then walk fast. Do some quick, quick. But you got to you got to keep those fast switch muscle fibers going. And you can come to my Tai Chi class. <laughs> this Tai Chi is awesome because it just, everything about it is balance and, you know, um, low center gravity, center support. So anyway, thank you guys. We can do a follow-up if we, if there's, there's plenty more stuff we can talk about. But we gave you a good... A good foundation, I think, and the handouts will help. And even if you just remember one or two things and practice it, then it's been a success. Mm -hmm.
Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.